Now then, to make this apple cider vinegar, we will be using the following. We're going to be using up to four apples. They could be any kind of apples. I just happen to be a Granny Smith sort of guy, so I like Granny Smith apples. We'll be using about three tablespoons of sugar. This is just plain granulated sugar. We'll need something to contain our apple cider vinegar while it's in the process of making itself. We'll need something to cover our container, whether it be a muslin cloth, cheesecloth, paper towel, or in this case, coffee filter. We'll need a rubber band or twine or something that will help hold our cover in place. We'll need enough clean filtered water to be able to cover our apples once we've got them in our container and to help minimize any possible problems we might have down the line with any bacteria or mold, we want to make sure that all of our equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized using the appropriate food grade sanitizer. In this case, I'm using StarSan. And that's all I need to make this apple cider vinegar. Now my container will hold five cups. So hopefully, after everything's all said and done, three, maybe four cups of apple cider vinegar. All right, I've taken the liberty of washing these apples because they are not organic. And I'm gonna go ahead and core the dog on things. I've seen this made with just the skins. I've seen it made with cores and skins. I've seen it made, turned into an almost applesauce-like texture. But as for me, I'm just gonna give these a rough chop. And let's get these into our container. All right, I'm guessing maybe three apples will fit in there. Let's find out. Okay, in my case, it looks like about two and a half apples is going to do it for me, leaving just a little headspace. Now to make things a little bit easier, we're just going to go ahead and dissolve our sugar beforehand into a little bit of our water. I think that's good enough. All right, now what we need to do in order to keep the bugs out and let some of the fermentation gases escape is to put on our cover. Now then, one more thing. We need to label our creation so we know just what it is we're doing. In this case, we're making an apple cider vinegar. And just so we know what to do when next, let's put a date on it. We started it on this date, 7-18-2022. Now then, for the next two or three weeks, every day or every other day, we want to go ahead and remove our top. And we want to, using a chopstick or back end of a spoon, we want to go ahead and redistribute those apples that are on the top. 
we want to make sure that they don't stay exposed to the air. So you just want to rotate them around a little bit and bring up some fresh ones up to the top. After that, go ahead and put your cover back on. And come back in the next day or two. Repeat the process. Okay, it's now been actually three weeks since I last left off. And over the course of the three weeks, I've been diligently giving the apple cider vinegar to be a good stir, making sure that the apples have kind of been circulated around so that none are spending a great deal of time on the surface, exposed to the air where they can possibly get mold. But some people say after two weeks, you can strain the, the fruit. Some people say after 30 days, I'm giving it middle row three weeks. And we're just gonna go ahead and strain off the apples. Okay, now that we've strained off as much as possible, go ahead and set this aside in a bowl in case anything else decides to drip out. And we can go ahead and return it back to our original container. We can go ahead and put our cap back on. And now for the next four weeks, we're going to set this aside where it's nice and dark out of the way and uh, let it finish continuing the process of becoming apple cider vinegar. So we'll come back in four weeks time and uh, check and see how it's done. Although I can say this right now, it does have a very pungent sour smell, which is what I'm told is the way it's supposed to smell. Uh, although I'm not showing it here, I did actually take a pH reading and it is coming in at around 3.0 on the uh, on the uh, on the scale so uh, we'll pick it up in four weeks now then after seven weeks this is what our apple cider vinegar looks like there's been some evaporation and there's been some sedimentation I guess the stuff down at the bottom might be called a mother although it doesn't look like the mothers that I've normally seen but nonetheless, that's what I got. Now I'm using just a regular cone-shaped coffee filter. This is actually a number two filter that I normally use for making my coffee. We can go ahead and remove the cover from our vinegar. And let's go ahead and pop open a cap. Drop in our funnel. And let's go ahead and put in as best we can, because it's not going to be a good fit, our filter. Now, I'm quite sure this might be messy, so I'll try and be careful with it. And let's go ahead and start straining it. Oh, so far pretty good. Now I should point out that as you start getting in more of the little heavier sediment at the bottom, the straining action of the coffee filter becomes less and less efficient in terms of flow. More than likely, I will probably have to replace this coffee filter with another just to be able to get every possible last drop of goodness out of that because things have definitely come pretty much to a stop. I mean, I could let it drip, 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 drip until it's all done, but coffee filters I've got. So let me go ahead and replace that coffee filter and let's see if I can get the rest of this out. Okay, having replaced the coffee filter with a new one, I got a little bit more flow, but let's just be honest, not very much. I mean, it's coming out a little bit better than it was, but not as good as it should be. But I can't complain. Uh, may as well go ahead and add all in the rest. And give it a little bit of time. 
Okay, I suppose if I let this go long enough, I could probably squeeze out every last possible little drop I'm going to get. But in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and consider that to be what I've got based on how, what it started with. Now then, how does it smell? Well, it's got a pungent aroma. It does smell like vinegar. Okay, now that I've made it, let's taste it and find out if it's any, any good. Uh, I could do a pH measurement. I do have a pH meter that would do the job. But I've decided to compare it against the store-bought stuff. Now, granted, this was Granny Smith apples, and this is apples from who knows where, but nonetheless, if it tastes anything, if this tastes anything like this, then we're good. If this tastes nothing like this, then I don't know, maybe there was a problem. So, to begin with. Of course, this test is purely subjective. Take a little bit of the stuff I just made. I will say this, Granny Smith apples are known for their tartness. <laughs> and that comes through here using just the regular stuff. <laughs> you know you're tasting vinegar. <laughs> Either way, uh, I guess the, uh, the fruit that you make your vinegar from <laughs> kind of like stays in your tongue <laughs> for a little while with either one of these. This one is slightly smoother taste because of the apples that were used. And uh, the one that I made with the Granny Smith apples, let's try that one again. Smell them out this time. Definitely has a much sharper, crisper taste to it. So again, uh, is it possible to make your own apple cider vinegar? It does kind of stay on your tongue for a while. I mean, it is vinegar. Uh, so. Long story short, uh, I don't know what this costs, but I'm quite sure because it's a large bottle of it, uh, it probably costs a fair amount. You can look it up at your local grocery store. Uh, in this household, uh, apple cider vinegar does you know, last forever, so even a small amount like this will last uh, quite a while. Uh, it's definitely cheaper if you've got the time. Uh, you can experiment around with different types of fruits. Uh, to come up with uh, apple cider vinegar if you're liking. Uh, the only difference that I can that I can see based on what I've seen uh, uh, online is that uh, whereas this requires refrigeration and will last up to a year, this does not. It does not require refrigeration. Uh, this one claimed to have uh, included the mother, but quite frankly, there was no really solidified mother-esque uh, type of mother down there. It was kind of like the uh, ground particles, somewhat similar to this one. So neither one of them actually produced, a, 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 let's just say, a, a, a hold in your hand type of, of mother that could be used. But overall, uh, as, a, as an experiment, since I'm unable to create vinegar from the wines that I make, I thought I'd go ahead and go ahead and try and make a vinegar intentionally. Uh, I can say that I've done it. Uh, it takes a little time. I mean, seriously, it takes a little time. But depending on how much apple cider vinegar you consume on a regular basis, uh, is this cheaper than this? This was the cost of, uh, what, three, two or three Granny Smith apples chopped up. This a uh, couple of dollars. <laughs> so it's entirely up to you. 
That having been said, I'm gonna wrap this up by simply saying, if you like what you see here, please click on that like and subscribe button. Better yet, become a member. Better yet, become a subscriber. Better yet, become a Patreon. And if you can't do anything else, click on that favorites button and at least make a small donation to help this channel continue on. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.